Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and welcome back to another Grounded video. Today, we're going to be talking about some really useful tips for not just new players, but players at any point in their gameplay. These can be useful for you no matter where you're at, or if you're just starting a new playthrough with a friend, things that you might have not really thought about before. So, let's get started. First up is that exclamation marks on an item in your inventory will usually mean that it has not yet been researched. If you don't already know, of course, just go ahead and go to one of the little research tents or the labs. Sometimes they're in special hot spots. But at the end of the day, go to these little research stations, research the item, and you'll get some raw science for it. Not everyone will give you a new recipe, but you will get some raw science, which could be spent in order to unlock more things later on. Second is that you can get on top of things whenever you're shooting at them. So what we're talking about here is kind of a bit of a bug within the game, you could call it, or an exploit even. And what this is, is whenever you're fighting a bug or you're fighting a spider or whatever it happens to be, if it's not flying, a lot of times it can't attack you if you're too high up. So you can use things like hoses, things like tree trunks, things like leaves, things like the little blades of grass, all of those things to get on top of, and then the bug will start to run away. When that happens, all you need to do is once it gets a little too far for you to shoot consistently is jump back down and it'll start running back towards you. Rinse and repeat this process until you've basically beaten just about any bug in the game. Some bugs can get around this sometimes, like the roly-poly, or if it's a flying bug like a bee or mosquito, of course, this is not going to work. It's just something to think about because it has saved me many times whenever I'm being chased by an orb weaver or whenever I'm being chased by any other bug in the game for that matter. Matter. Third is that whenever you go to sleep, you will always wake up with low food and water. It won't be empty, but it will be low. So what this means is that you shouldn't be drinking water or eating food just before bed. Instead, go ahead and go to sleep, then wake up and drink your water and eat your food. Otherwise, you're going to be completely wasting a ton of food and a ton of water that you could have actually been benefiting from. Now for number four, since we're already talking about going to sleep in the game, another thing you should be looking out for is making sure that you always go ahead and put things on your drying racks, put things in your grinder, put things in your spinning wheels, anything that kind of has a cue time really, in order to go ahead and make it so that when you go to sleep and you wake up, that eight hours has passed and your character now will have all of those things done. In other words, let's just say you queue up some things in a spinning wheel, like some plant fiber into rope or some silk, and then you wake up and it will all be done for you. This can be incredibly useful and incredibly time saving. I've even caught myself sometimes going to sleep during the day specifically for this purpose. Alrighty, we are halfway there with number five, which is the fact that you should be using those spinning wheels and grinders to get more plant fiber and get more crude rope. Now, what we're talking about here is just the simple fact that if you take, say, a weed stem or a blade of grass and you walk over to a grinder, you can actually put it in and turn it directly into plant fiber. One weed stem or one blade of grass will give you either five or eight plant fiber, which is a fair amount. Now, normally that would only turn into one or two crude rope, but since we're also going to be using multiple spinning wheels, you can go ahead and put that plant fiber into the spinning wheels, and it only costs one plant fiber per crude rope rather than three. This is just a big, big resource grind saver, so you don't have to spend so much time grinding grass and grinding fiber and grinding all these other resources when you could be spending your time doing fun things like taking on new labs, going and looking for collectibles, hunting down different bugs, or whatever it is you happen to want to do in the game. Sixth is that arrows are picked up when they're laying on the ground simply by walking over them. A lot of my friends, surprisingly enough, didn't actually know about this mechanic, and it is incredibly useful. All this means is that if you shoot your arrows at a bug or you shoot your arrows into the ground and miss, whatever it happens to be, all you need to do to get them back is simply walk over them or walk next to them. You do not have to sit there and spam the interact button in order to get them all back. All you need to do is simply walk over them, and if you have inventory space, your character will pick it up. 
Seven is to remember to use your jerky racks. A lot of people build them, use them once or twice, and then totally forget about it. Jerky racks are incredibly useful for a number of different reasons. First off, you don't have to farm nearly as many berries if you just turn your berries into leather by drying them on the rack. It only takes one leather instead of three when you would normally craft it at a workbench, so using that drying rack will save you a ton of resource grinding. Once again, you can also use the drying rack to create food out of all the different bugs that drop meat. If you cook the meat, it will eventually decay and become useless, therefore you can't farm up that much of it. But if you're like us and happen to live in an area where there's a lot of food readily available via killing gnats or via killing other bugs, all you have to do is use a jerky rack to dry it out and that will turn into jerky which will last forever. This is incredibly useful long term if you're trying to play through the entire game as it saves you a ton of time farming resources rather than having to kill one or two bugs at a time for your food source or going and hunting down some other food source all you need to do is simply dry your meat on the rack and it will last forever Eighth is to not doubt the power of the zip line. Zip lines in Grounded are incredibly great time savers. These will save you so much time anytime you're trying to go somewhere around the map or anytime you're trying to transport resources to your base to craft something or even transport them somewhere else to craft something there. Personally, we've set up multiple zip lines to get us around to different places. We live in an area where there is not a lot of actual grass available to us, so what we decided to do is set up a zip line near the grass that goes directly to our base. Then we can chop down all the grass and just unload it onto the zip line and it will send the grass to our base and we don't have to carry it back and make those trips back and forth. Then when we're all done, we jump on the zip line and zip home, saving ourselves even more walk time, which starts to really, really add up. We also have zip lines that just go to various places across the map, which will also save you large amounts of time just from traveling. Walking from one place in the backyard to another can take an extremely long time in Grounded. Therefore, taking the time to set up zip lines will save you an immense amount of time and energy when it comes to just traveling around the map. Coming in at number 9 is another tip that will just help you to save more time and be more efficient, and that's that using the full red ant armor set will actually allow you to carry 8 items instead of 5. There is also actually a food that you can create that will allow you to carry even more, but the point is, is the red ant armor is very, very cheap and easy to craft, and once you have it, it will give you the ability to carry a significant amount more when it comes to carrying grass blades or it comes to carrying stems. This means that you don't have to spend so much time walking back and forth if you don't have a zip line, or if you do have a zip line, you don't have to spend as much time walking it to that zip line. You're going to need this armor probably anyways for certain parts during the story, so I'd recommend just using it and making it early so you can benefit from the amount of items you're able to carry with it. Coming in at number 10 is our last tip, which if you've been playing the game for a long time you might already know, but a lot of new players seem to miss this. If you make a full set of red ant armor, red ants will not be aggressive towards you. And you may say, well, red ants aren't aggressive to me already. Well, what it actually is is the red ant workers aren't aggressive. Eventually, you're going to have to get near some red ant soldiers for certain things during your quest line that I don't want to spoil for you. But when you have to do that, having the full red ant armor set on makes it so none of them are aggressive towards you. It saves yourself a ton of time fighting them and a ton of frustration dying to them when you get to those parts. It's also just very useful for a number of different reasons, so once again, I highly, highly recommend when you're still in tier 1 armor and weapons that you go ahead and just craft that red ant armor set. You're gonna use it at multiple different times during your gameplay, so it's extremely useful to have no matter where you're at in your grounded experience. Now for our extra bonus tip, we highly recommend you guys consider subscribing to our channel. I know it's cheesy, but hear me out. We make tons of different survival game content, and if you guys do enjoy games like Grounded, you enjoy games like Icarus, you want to see the new different games coming out, do consider subscribing to us. We make game reviews that take in real player experiences. We play every game that we do play for at least 24 hours before making content on it. We really want to make it so that you guys as new players don't just get reviews from people who've played a game for two hours we want to give you a full good review knowing what we're talking about and even though we're not perfect we do our absolute best to provide you with genuine honest opinions and content about different games so with that being said if you want to see more grounded content and if you want to see other survival game content just consider subscribing to our channel it's totally free 
You don't have to do it. It's up to you. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.